So today we'll explain uh, 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 what is a Riemann hybrid correspondence in two examples uh, for differential equations and Q-difference equations. And I'll better start with example before explain, explain what are Stokes data. Um, so example is the following. Suppose we have some polynomial in one variable, and I assume it's of even degree. Um, and I write differential equation uh, minus dx square plus v applied to some function of psi to the zero, or oh, well, the same as second derivative of psi is v psi. Uh, mm. This is uh, differential equation gives you also d module, holonomic d module on a fine line. This coordinate x, uh, you just, in fact, it will be ranked to bundle this flat connection. You uh, consider a vector in this vector bundle as psi and psi prime, and this satisfies already first order differential equation. And space of solutions is in analytic functions, uh, is two dimensional. Because it's uh, C is contractible, so you can specify solution to each point in derivative and get unique solution. So it's I mark to C2. Okay. Now we look on uh, formal solutions at infinity. Uh, so to write a formal solution, you do this, this the following things. You write a polynomial, I uh, assume the polynomial has, you can rescale uh, a variable and can assume that polynomial start with coefficients one. Uh, and, and then we can write a sum of two things, we will be w prime squared plus some rest where uh, w is so degree n plus one and the degree of this uh, correction term is at most n minus one and maybe you can also write leading coefficients will be kind of r n minus one x and minus one, that's how it turns. Okay. Uh, then uh, one can uh, solve this equation in expressions like this. So one can write psi uh, plus minus. It will, it will be two formal solutions. It will be exponent plus minus uh, w multiplied by some power of x and series will be series in x inverse. The lambda plus minus, you can leave you the exercise is equal to minus n plus minus this leading coefficient. Yeah, so, mm. yeah, so that's, uh, uh, very easy to <laughs> easy to have two, so two formal solutions, and in uh, kind of in general theory of, of kind of uh, of last uh, lecture, um, last lecture it means that uh, uh, if you can if you work over if you make a completion uh, go to this bundle instead of line to punctured disk uh, form punctured disk. Uh, then it, it belongs to module belongs to direct sum of two blocks uh, corresponding to this e plus minus w times regular uh, 
MIDI modules. Yeah, so, uh, so it would be sum of two one-dimensional object now form power series. Uh, so in particular, this uh, for abstract uh, uh, isomorphism classes, uh, correction term R is irrelevant. All of them gives give the same uh, formal module, but they differ and they differ by uh, kind of stocks data, uh, namely. Mm, Array is called is stocks ray. If uh, mm, for this equation, uh, if a real part of uh, I think just x and plus one on the ray is equal to zero. And uh, what we get, we get kind of, we get two n plus two rays. Uh, uh, maybe like it's for case for n equals three. And real, uh, real axis is not on the stock ray. And the complement called stock sectors. It's usually the stock sector is the same as component of, in this case, connected component of C minus the set of stocks rays. Uh, in stock sectors, uh, uh, um, this, uh, the claim is there exists uh, uh, a unique solution which is uh, alternatively up, uh, asymptotic, which is uh, asymptotic to say plus one is in the sense of form of power series. And, uh, and this is the smallest, smallest of two solutions because in the array, one, uh, if you kind of ignore this term, real part of one uh, uh, expression will be big, much bigger, exponentially bigger than real part of another expression. Ex expression. So it'll be uh, definitely one smallest solution. Uh, and formally smallest in the sector. And what you get? Uh, you get uh, in two-dimensional space, in C2, uh, kind of abstract space of solutions, you get a 2n plus 2 vectors. Uh, you get C1, C2, C2 n plus 2 which is equal to psi zero. And in the main condition that psi i, which psi i plus one is not zero for any i, let's say from one, zero to n minus one, to n plus one. Yeah, so you get configuration of n non-zero uh, uh, vectors in a two-dimensional space, so that each two, two subsequent form a basis. This forms some interesting variety, some modular space, and uh, that will be description of uh, in Betty picture by Roman Hilbert's correspondence of your equation. So you said that it's encoded in this collection of uh, vectors. Okay. okay, so that's example to keep in mind. Uh, Now I'll go to general story. So you don't have to fix monogram of the cluster, or <coughs> fix always cluster? It's maybe A or B, whatever is this, AX. It's, it's one of cluster, there are various types of cluster varieties. I think it's X cluster variety. Yeah, so uh, of, uh, 
I will speak about general classification of hol holomic D modules on on a germ of punctured disk. Punctured disk. Um, so what does it mean? I consider a uh, module over the field. I consider C of Z, Z inverse. Germs of meromorphic functions at, at zero. It will be finite dimensional space. And plus connection. Satisfying Leibniz rule. Yeah, uh, by the way, here one can try to think that z is equal to x inverse, it's coordinate at infinity in this example. Mm. Yeah, so that will be uh, my next topic. So, so uh, recall formal classification. So if we get over C of Z, so it is so we ignore convergence uh, constraint. Uh, then um, uh, this any uh, holonomic module will be M is canonically decomposed in the direct sum uh, of certain. Uh, a finite set. Uh, we think uh, this guy belongs to different blocks. Uh, so they do not talk to each other. And the block uh, uh, will be of the following. We consider for each alpha get certain number n alpha greater than 1. Some integer number, it's uh, this ramification number. And mm. Mm. block will be the following. We consider covering w alpha, it will be z to 1 over n alpha. It will be coordinate on one disk covering to z alpha. That's raise, uh, raise, uh, raise to n's power. And the block will be direct image of uh, the following thing, we consider the exponent of some uh, uh, greater than integers, C K alpha, uh, W alpha. Times regular module over Uh, uh, so we and here C K alpha it's some finite sum and uh, greatest common divisors of of K uh, said that C K alpha is non-zero is one yeah so uh, and these things are defined up to action of roots of one okay. Uh, yeah, so we get so we get finite collection of uh, uh, this uh, irregular uh, this um, uh, of polynomials because one just replace v, v alpha just to form the right z minus k and alpha. Uh, okay, and uh, we get this finite collection of. The polynomials, and oh, maybe one can say it's, uh, this formal classification in the following way. Uh, for each uh, this uh, block appearing in the decomposition, we consider uh, a circle. Mm. I'll take just uh, pull back a uh, circle of n and alpha roots of S1. Covering. Sorry? Abstract circle, yeah. And as one seat, uh, it's, uh, it's R mod 2 pi z. It's arguments of set, uh, circle of arguments of z. And uh, 
and mm. then what I ought to say is that we this uh, regular D model can be sorted as a local system. Uh, w alpha, its uh, arguments of W alpha, its uh, form uh, the circle S1 alpha. And this regular local system, uh, I said it's the same as local system on a circle. It's exactly on this circle. So what we get? We get a local system on disjoint union of circles. That will be, uh, that will be uh, what corresponds to uh, this formal D module by this classification theorem. Uh, now I want to go to uh, formal to analytic. And here stocks uh, data which appears. Mm. Uh, these expressions maybe denote something like F alpha multi-valued expression. This collection of F alpha. Uh, just collect some find a collection of this piece of polynomial. I, I will encode it to a Stokes diagram. Mm. Mm. What is a Stokes diagram? You can maybe I'll start with first with examples and uh, kind of if you have just regular singularity, uh, then the Stokes diagram it's a circle surrounding zero, and if it's uh, for example exponent of one square root of z to power one half, uh, then this guy will be. Sorry, does this circle have the radius? Uh, I will be more precise later. Yeah, it, uh, it stops diagram maybe up to a certain isotopy. And it will be not concrete subset of uh, uh, maybe in R2 minus 0. Uh, uh, for exponent z one half or two, and for exponent, say, you mean have two blocks, exponent one over z and exponent minus one over z. What we draw? Two circles, slightly eccentric, and this corresponds to exponent minus one over z, and this corresponds to exponent one over z. Yeah. Mm. What is the what is the meaning of this uh, stock diagram? Yeah, uh, all this uh, uh, think this uh, function f alpha we can consider this as a one multi-valued function on on C star. I take all possible branches of my uh, individual uh, in terms of alpha and also take all possible assets. So I get many, many locally I get several analytic functions. Mm. And, and because there are several alphas, even some branches never go by monodromy to another. So, uh, so I get this uh, multi-valued uh, function. And uh, I consider generic generic ray exponent of i theta. And if, if I restrict to a generic ray, I get just a bunch of complex valued function of a uh, real uh, argument. Mm. 
and now I take mm, uh, absolute value of exponent. Bar. Uh, ah, these functions are uh, I, I get uh, positive valued uh, uh, functions. Positive valued functions. And for generic ray, uh, for each two of them, one will be uh, up, uh, uh, grow much faster, exponentially faster than another if I approach zero. Uh, the reason is the following, because mm, if I take uh, uh, two branches. Okay, so your pictures are centered at infinity. At zero. No, no, in infinity here was, uh, because my singularity was at infinity. And coordinates was, uh, yeah, but now it's all, all centered, it's zero, yeah. So Z is X inverse. Yeah, yeah, it's written. It, uh, uh, you don't, you can see it, yeah. Okay. It's exactly, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And the uh, order by gross. Kind of R. It Uh, now I go to zero, not infinity, because mm, uh, 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 they are totally ordered. Uh, now, for example, if consider, uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, here positive ray. On positive ray, if z is, expo is exponent of i zero times r, just r, which is positive number, then exponent of minus one over r. It's very big. Uh, oh, 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 sorry. I think it's actually exponent plus one. Uh, exponent minus r, it's much, much less than one, and much, much less than exponent of plus one over r. But if r is positive, negative, then they get opposite order. And uh, uh, this Stokes diagram will, be, uh, will do for us the following. If you consider, just to draw Stokes diagram, uh, generic Stokes diagrams, you do something like this. You put your in hand your chalk and start to just make things like this. In anything. <laughs> yeah, just uh, 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 any such thing as a Stokes diagram. And um, if you get a, a, a generic ray, uh, so intersection of generic ray. With the Stokes diagram, maybe I denote something like uh, how to denote that like big D with this diagram. Uh, uh, yeah, the Stokes diagram will be in, in effectively uh, immersed. Uh, Stokes diagrams will be immersion of this union of rays. in some way. Uh, mm, the intersection points will be um, all this mm, mm, all um, branches of my function, multivalued functions, and they're totally ordered. And here, this kind of, this, the closest things to zero will, will represent the smallest solution, uh, the next solution, so it will be uh, natural order on the growth of functions. But uh, then, if you get some kind of bad rays, then mm, mm, you cannot uh, decide uh, uh, when the order jumps a little bit, uh, jumps when you move uh, f to the left to the right. Namely, uh, when for two f uh, kind of Stokes rays are the following. You get uh, two branches, two different branches of my multivalued functions. Uh, I don't know something called, it's called kind of f first and f second, which could be branches of one f alpha or branches of two different f alphas, uh, such that f one minus f two, it will be certain uh, certain constant uh, 
to be c times uh, uh, z to power Uh, where lambda zero is a, uh, is a um, most polar part of the expression. It's a, I got, we'll write something like one plus small o one. And, and the things restricted to ray is, uh, uh, takes values in, in imaginary, uh, purely imaginary no numbers. So the, if you take exponent of the thing, you get something of size one. But if you move it uh, rotate a little bit the way the ray, then it will be uh, in, in, in increase or decrease. Yeah. So you get a uh, finite collection of Stokes rays, and Stokes rays in this picture correspond uh, to points when uh, several branches are immersed to each other. Mm. Now, so that's uh, mm, So the, the classical theorem by uh, it's it maybe it's called Delini and Malgrange, and it was reproven by Kashavar and Shapira. In some yeah, but it's classical stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's not. It says that uh, uh, Um, holonomic uh, uh, d module over uh, the thing. Uh, is given by the following. It's first to fix kind of. Uh, uh, um, uh, this the model by because it can go to form the model gives a certain collection of uh, uh, this piezo polynomial and by this procedure a bunch of uh, uh, the Stokes diagram mm, uh, uh, the, the the claim is the following. First, it's a, it's a local system on uh, S1, uh, kind of original S1, which is set of arguments of Z, Z or on C star, this coefficient It's equivalent. It's a local system which will be uh, solutions of uh, my, my uh, differential equation. In the form, naturally, vector bundle with flat connection, holomorphic bundle with flat connection. But now, uh, and then uh, stocks and the stocks data. The stocks data says the following for any generic, generic ray, uh, uh, mm. if you can see the solutions uh, uh, on along the ray. You get some finite dimensional space on gamma uh, space of solutions along ray. You get a filtration. And filtration uh, corresponds exactly to intersection of, uh, of the Stokes ray with, uh, with the diagram. And filtration by order of growth. Uh, so you say that element belongs to each term. Uh, some terms filtration is a certain equivalent to exponent of the things uh, uh, times uh, uh, 
function with polynomial growth by intersection reintersected this big diagram and some condition a long stocks ray uh, yeah so it's doesn't the filtration local doesn't change if you rotate a bit your angle but if you go to stocks ray you get two filtrations on the same space and they're uh, satisfying some rules Actually, what are rules? So what we have near one stocks ray. So we get plane, we get stocks ray, and get the permutation S n where n is he'll be number of intersection of diagram with generic ray so from here it will be something like 8 you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and if you uh, and you order them in one way, and then you get uh, uh, a different order if you go through stock three. Uh, so the question uh, now we get two filtrations. If you consider the space of solutions near uh, near near stock three, it's contractible domains. It's certain vector space on space of near, near the stock three. You get two filtrations and they should interact in certain uh, mm, um, ways. They're not arbitrary filtration on the left and the right. Uh, Yeah, uh, let's consider the simplest case. And uh, which appears kind of if you have put generic coefficients in your equation. Simplest case, when you cross the stock's ways, you get just a uh, 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 standard generator of symmetric group in evolution of two. Uh, two terms. Yeah, so, so suppose we had some vector space, whatever V will be space of solutions near A, and then we get uh, two filtrations. We get uh, maybe mm, zero is equal to F zero, three. and then you get another filtration to zero prime uh, how they in interact so there's uh, mm, something drop just in one place and uh, the picture is that these two filtrations coincide everywhere except one term so you get something like f f i minus one is equal to f minus one prime and all the, all the previous also coincide. And it contains fi, contains fi plus 1, and it contains f, uh, f prime. Or 
all this coincide, but this in general not do not coincide. So it means that what happens if you make quotient Uh, uh, of this term by this term, uh, it's the same for both filtration, and we get two subspaces, namely f i and f i prime, and the kind of, uh, kind of condition uh, uh, in this case uh, is that these subspaces are complementary. Complementary in this portion, in this on this quotient space. Uh, now, by the way, if you have such a picture, when if, when you go to associate graded, uh, they will be uh, permuted exactly by this permutation because this if the spaces are complementary, then this quotient will be equal to this quotient, and Canonically, yeah, yeah, uh, and in general, if you get these tox daggers when all intersections are only like this, then you immediately get the condition for the uh, for the whole picture. Get this flex related in the special way intersection points and we get identified and in particular we get local systems on this uh, kind of normalization of this picture we put uh, here disjoint union of two intervals instead of intersecting uh, automatically we get local system on the uh, disjoint union of s1 alphas so it's the same yeah and it will be the same and kind of uh, uh, fact it's the same it's this data coming from formal classification Identified, identify associated gra associated graded spaces, and get a local system on the joint union of these uh, circles. What to do in general? In general, if you have some uh, kind of more complicated permutation, you uh, 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 exp uh, uh, right as, as a product of uh, simple generators in the shortest forms and not unique way. If you get, for example, deform to like this, yeah, so it will be some part of my picture. Or you can deform in a different way and and try to describe the same, uh, re reduce to the case of uh, uh, simple generators and the claim you get the same category. It doesn't depend on uh, uh, choice of sh shortest um, decomposition. For example, here, uh, this local picture, if you analyze either in this way or in this way, and you get that uh, this uh, my space of solutions is split in the direct sum of three spaces, and they are just permuted in opposite order. No. Yeah, so, so this is the story, and here's some kind of really uh, uh, things which has no uh, importance whatsoever, but I found it pretty amusing that not all permutations can appear in uh, uh, mm. crossing Stokes ray. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, what is impossible from if, 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 if you have like n equal four. In the first case, when some permutation cannot appear, the permutation 
three one four two and two four one three after uh, never appears. So you get twenty two, uh, which is a possible and two are impossible. And if n is very large, the number of possible permutation grows. Uh, number of possible permutations. It's something called large Schroeder number. I don't know what this means, but it grows something like four to power n, not not like n factorial. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, it, it doesn't really play any role at all. Yeah, one can formulate for arbitrary permutation, but in, f in fact, the you get very special permutations in real life. Uh, and, mm, and it's kind of general result about uh, uh, following thinking. Suppose you get and real analytic functions, germs of real analytic functions in one variable. And variable, I maybe I can imagine like theta, this is slope. And, and suppose uh, my functions are not equal to each other, I am equal to j. And all functions of 0 takes value 0. Uh, then uh, uh, yeah, why uh, ordered my functions? Because if I get several functions, uh, I, uh, because they differ, they differ. Uh, no, they are not identically equal to each other. It means they really differ for, let's say, small negative uh, values of x. I say that phi one of x and then phi n of x for x less than 0 and very close to 0. But then if I go for positive numbers, I get some other, or not x, it's called theta. Um, for theta. So I get just a bunch of, I get certain permutations. And these permutations are exactly those which appear in uh, uh, general situations. Why so? Because these expressions are kind of real analytic functions of angles. And, and permutations, how to, maybe I just draw uh, this diagram of permutation in uh, uh, some simple case. Yeah, you. Mm. Decompose your n elements in some groups. Yeah, so this will be from one to n. And now I, I decompose by several groups, and each group flips the order to the opposite. Hmm? No, this permutation is like for one, two, three goes to three to one. Yeah, yeah, and to put several this. Uh, total flips one on top of another. Then I, again, these groups decompose in several groups. And put them again in some order. For example, here I can do like this. And now what I do, this may be just Again, this big groups again flip one over another. Yeah, so I hope that it's kind of clear. Then we get one of the special permutations. Yeah, but it's really irrelevant fact. I have to say, but it's kind of amusing that you get uh, the story and where it com fr comes from, all this, uh, this second permutation. It comes from the fact that you don't have a full unipotent group when you consider the small permutations. It's not the full whale group. 
No, it's subset of wide group. It's certain subset, but w w w it's kind of uh, statement about collection of real analytic functions. And uh, the reason is the following. If you get real analytic functions, if you want to compare which one is bigger for small negative and small positive values of function, you take their difference. And this is still non-zero analytic function. It has some leading uh, coefficients. It will be even or odd power of <laughs> monomial. And then uh, if you analyze a little bit this uh, story, then you get this strange statement. And the infinity function of obviously obvious one can put arbitrary order. OK. Yeah, so that's uh, mm, uh, classical picture of Stokes filtration. And, uh, and it had some kind of new life. Uh, uh, recently, maybe I'll say just a couple of words. Yeah, so this application, it will be kind of a bit description, description of um, the following thing. You suppose have X, Y, just uh, have some compact complex curve, Y bar minus finite subset and what I interesting again is in algebraic bundles with flat connect with connections on algebraic bundle plus connection on y on, on this complement uh, so this was picture for uh, Mm, one uh, for the puncture disk, but uh, in general the picture is the following. You, if you have your curve, whatever, some certain genus, you remove several points, and then around each point you draw like, I don't know, peaceful atom diagram. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. So uh, I just remind my question yeah. because your picture was abstract. It's abstract, but uh, for, for this, uh, it was up to isotopia because I said what is the order of uh, it was. Uh, uh, maybe I say with the, the following: I get immersion of uh, S one uh, of this union of S ones, which tran intersect transversally rays, and the self intersection points correspond to uh, Stokes rays. Uh, so these things are depend on maybe on local coordinates and um, not terribly canonical. Uh, and it explains that one can really move the picture and get the same uh, equivalent descriptions. These different filtrations. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. So so you draw several diagrams and what you want to have have local system outside of these diagrams. outside these diagrams embedded in your surface. And then uh, if you consider a neighborhood of each point, you, you, do the you get local system on uh, homotopically circle and you apply the same storage filtrations. Plus uh, filtrations satisfying these constraints. Uh, Near each point, near each puncture. Yeah, so it's mm, nice, but uh, uh, there was uh, something which uh, ar ar arised kind of pretty recently, and 
from various directions. Uh, uh, there is a very clean way to formulate it in terms of um, mm, constructible shifts and micro-local supports. Yeah, suppose if you have whatever, m get some c infinity manifold, mm. just a real manifold, and you get a shift uh, of mm, essentially anything on m, then I get something like c c c ss of f, which is a cotangent bundle, and it's kind of it's conical. Invariant close subset. And if L in a cotangent bundle will be singular closed conical subset, singular closed and in fact, in our case, will be a uh, singular Lagrangian closed subset. Uh, I'm not ter terribly clear uh, about uh, what kind of singular Lagrangian, let's say sub sub analytic, yeah, but it's, it's, n it's, uh, one, it's a good choice, sub, sub analytic. Then we we'll get a, a category. Maybe triangulated category in this our case will be uh, uh, of uh, shifts whose support is contained in L. So it's no conical. Ah, sorry, conical. Conical. Uh, conical. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. Second. Uh, yeah, yeah. Suppose if L is zero section, uh, then uh, uh, this shifts the single support and uh, single support of F is in L is equivalent to the statement that F is a local system, is, lo is locally constant, is a local system. And yeah, let's do case just one one variable m is equal to r. So the cotangent bundle to m is m and, uh, and cotangent fiber. Yeah, so uh, so in this case, when l is zero, we get local system. But suppose now l is zero section. In union of cotangent fiber at zero. So, so L will be coordinate cross. Then uh, this thing you get, uh, you get a construct uh, shifts, com constructible uh, shifts on R, constructible with respect to stratification, uh, kind of. Uh, Negative numbers, meaning zero, meaning positive numbers. <coughs> get three strata, and uh, then I get uh, so it will be local system on uh, two rays uh, because a constructible contractible is just two say vector spaces. You get so it gets three vector spaces. And F zero maps to F minus and F plus because kind of if we get germ of section point zero, it will give germ point. Well, it's on, on the right hand side. 
Yeah, so get um, uh, so the category of shifts will be just three vector spaces in two maps. But now, if you do such guy, so that means that you get posi positively co-oriented point. Zero, can you know how to draw it. Uh, then it means uh, that, uh, uh, for example, this map from F0 to F minus is isomorphism. And what you get? You get just two vector spaces because this is a coincide and one maps to another. This category is a representation of Quiver. Of Quiver. E2, not E3. Okay. Uh, now, no, oh, I think, okay. Now, suppose we have a collection. Suppose my manifold is surface, topological surface. Oh, it will be a complex curve eventually. And I have a, fi a collection of immersed co oriented real curves. Um, then I take union of the uh, positive conormal bundles and zero section, take L, will be zero section. Of positive conormal bundles. And you get certain condition on shifts. Mm. Let's... Uh, Try. Uh, yeah, suppose uh, uh, we have uh, locally just one curve and it's co-oriented, uh, uh, so it's boundary of some uh, like line boundary of some hyperplane. Uh, then uh, what we get, we get fiber. Let's say left fiber right of my shift. And uh, essentially, because it's it, it add kind of one dummy variable to one uh, to one dimensional case, and you get a map. What it represents? Uh, the, uh, the category of shifts with uh, macro local support and this local pick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And what happens if you have two corrected uh, lines? Then you have something like four different uh, uh, st stocks of shift of, of smooth points in four quadrants, and you get a map. Then, then you get a map. Get a. Uh, ah, the conditions that uh, at this point you don't uh, add anything else to your sing uh, singular support uh, means the following that you get commutative diagram uh, plus the following condition. If consider 
kind of three-step complex. Uh, when we put uh, uh, like I don't know, s1, s2, s3, s4, and you change signs somewhere, s1 plus s2, and maybe minus s3 plus s4. Just uh, that this complex is acyclic. equivalent to the condition that you had complementary vector spaces? Yes, yes, exactly, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, so the typical situation, you get something like c to power a, c to power a plus b, c to power a plus b plus c, and c to power a plus b plus c. And it's called Cartesian and co-Cartesian diagram. Um, like this. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, so this uh, this also uh, even local story about classifications of this uh, Stokes filtration can be said the following kind of local uh, classification of uh, these things. Uh, it, it, it says the following, and I, I, I deform my diagram to have only trans transversal intersection. Again, so I draw. It's not really a realistic case. I draw the things and orient everything outwards. And consider uh, constructible shifts with micro local support in this uh, thing, which are equal to zero inside. So uh, I, I, I remove uh, part of zero section, which is a neighborhood of uh, zero. Remove uh, mm, part of zero section, section, which can, it will be kind of innermost uh, part of the diagram. Component of, let's say, R2 minus diagram around zero. So here uh, will be no sh shift will be zero. And mm, uh, uh, what will happen, to, uh, we get here exactly pieces of Stokes filtration, uh, describing some kind of, uh, uh, if you intersect with the ray, then we, uh, we increase our space, uh, space became larger and larger. Um, and associated gradient will get local system of S union of S1s. Uh, so I need to the region, it's a, a constant shift uh, okay. on a locally closed set. Oh, on open set. Uh, uh, on locally closed set, yeah, because on the boundary it's, it's extent, extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but on outside it will get uh, maybe non-trivial monodromy. Yeah, so it's... Um, that's essentially the whole equivalent description. And uh, next lecture, I will explain that it's kind of natural from point of view of Foucault categories. It's just reformulation of the uh, story, but uh, through this constructible shifts, which wasn't said at the time. Mm. Uh, yeah, so maybe I can a little bit re return to this original example. And this, uh, this point zero will be point infinity uh, in my, for my equation, or well, in general, I can write differential equation of some order, some minus minus dx to power n plus plus potential start plus x to power n. If you write uh, such differential equation, uh, what what it will um, what the equation of linear algebra it will appear from. Uh, <coughs> This description, mm. Mm. Uh, n will be exactly number of uh, this. I think you get a picture which it's a bit hard to draw. It's kind of I imagine that you draw something like this. 
uh, it will be a kind of periodic diagram. Uh, yeah, for example, in uh, this original case, you get uh, something like uh, for question second order, you get uh, such story. And uh, in this case, uh, the local system outside will have trivial monodromy because the outside will be C. Uh, it will be contractible. Yeah, so what you get, uh, you, you, you get uh, n dimensional vector space. Kind of solutions of your equations. And then you get uh, uh, vectors psi 1, psi n plus m, equal to psi 0, a kind of cyclically ordered, uh, or maybe consider psi i, where i belongs to z mod n plus m. Collection of uh, uh, cyclically ordered vectors with the condition that psi i plus 1, which, which psi i plus n is non-zero for any i. So it means that each n of them in cyclic order form a basis. It's kind of famous cluster variety for Grassmannian, which people uh, appears in now in many, many places. And that's its concrete example of the, all this uh, Stokes data geometry. So I'll take a break about maybe five minutes. Yeah, now, yeah so uh, the second part will be uh, uh, something which also can be called riemann hilbert correspondence. I'll explain uh, next time why it's natural. It's about uh, Q difference equations. So what is this? Uh, mm. Suppose Q is a complex number and I assume that it's not on a unit circle, let's say less than one. Uh, and I do not by a q the, uh, the following algebra. It's C of x one hat plus inverse, x two hat plus in, uh, two invertible elements, kind of free group of uh, group wrinkle of free group, modulus the relation that x2 hat x1 hat equal to q x1 hat x2 hat. And mm, uh, this is algebra, it's, it admits a filtration, as I explained in previous lectures, and one can speak about holonomic modules. Mm, and mm, um, why it's skewed difference equation? Because one can try to think it's x1, maybe call it z, then x2 hat will be the exponent of log q z over dz. It will be a, a shift operator, a multiplicative shift. z goes to qz. Okay. Mm, instead of derivative. Uh, uh, so get, uh, one can ask about holonomic modules. Uh, and the story is uh, remarkably parallel to uh, uh, differential question story. First of all, uh, like in uh, differential equations, we go to formal p uh, disk. So we said consider completion. And takes two, uh, maybe do not break T, the separator. Shift. Uh, now, I can see the finite sum of powers of shift operators coefficients in uh, a Lorentz series. 
Mm, so it's 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 completely a complete parallel of differential operators. Uh, there is a notion of regular modules in this case. Yeah. Uh, first of all, if you consider uh, uh, modules of these guys, will be modules of these things. It will be automatically uh, finite dimensional spaces of the field of uh, 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 Laurent series equivalent under dilation, with, with action of dilation, plus action of T instead of connection. And mm, definition, so there's no analog of delta function here, in this case. So the definition that this module is, and plus the action is called uh, regular. Uh, if uh, it contains uh, if it M contains a sub-module M0, which is M0 of, uh, free of finite rank over infinity. And again, uh, and connection preserves, T preserves, TM0 belongs. It's preserved under this shift operator. Yeah, so it's uh, mm, uh, in differential case it was invariance under Z or DZ. Now it's invariance under this story. And you want M0 to span? Yeah, yeah and M0 span. Yeah, sorry, and M is equal to CZ. Yeah. Now, such guys. Uh, uh, parallel to usual d models and classification of regular d modules is uh, uh, regular difference models is uh, similar. Yeah, yeah. You can take, for example, z to power mu theory z. Uh, kind of morally, you can take this guy. Uh, uh, and uh, it will be simple regular modules. Uh, and uh, uh, how is the operator T acts? Operator T acts on the generator. Z mu goes to Q to power mu. It, so you should say what is Q to power mu in the sense. Uh, uh, so this model M mu. And Mu, mu one is equal to isomorphic to m mu two. If mu one minus mu two uh, belongs to z, is to pi z over q. Or oh, one can mm, mm, what you essentially get, you get uh, things correspond to points of elliptic curve. In fact, the elliptic curve, it's C star to by Q to power Z. Uh, uh, you have a generator, and you say that uh, generated vectors by, actu by action of T multiply by some constant. So you get a, a certain invertible constant. But if you uh, make a different generator by power Z, then it is constant multiplied by power of Q. So you get a quotient. The simple models correspond to this guys and uh, and the whole category of regular modules a billion category of q is that mute root of infinity no q is has le norm less than 1 less than 1 yeah one can do it also for algebraically for not to uh, category of regular modules difference modules of this thing is the same as coherent shifts with finite support on elliptic curve. Yeah. 
Ja, dit... One story. Now what to do with for irregular uh, things? Kind of like irregular terms or blocks. Uh, in this case, are in one-to-one -one correspondence to rational numbers. Yeah. Uh, so in the uh, case of differential equations, blocks are the, well, the spews of uh, polynomials, and they have continuous parameters. Here there's no continuous parameter whatsoever. And um, what is a block? Suppose I get number t, which is a over b, and usual whatever is b greater than 1 a in z and echo prime, write rational number in equ. Then I write, you consider c of v. And, uh, and with S endomorphism t prime, w goes to q to 1 over b. And here we uh, choose this root of q. If you choose this root of q, then we have a um, spectrum of this ring maps to the spectrum of ring. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, map compatible with, uh, with automorphism. So we get this projection. And what we do, we consider push forward of uh, uh, regular C of V module tensoring by C of V by some standard analog of exponential of uh, 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 module uh, module E alpha, it's kind of, and E alpha is C of W explained by some generator, e, e, uh, e, EA, it's some generator EA, it's one, uh, one dimensional bundle, and the action of T, EA goes to W to power B times EA. Bar, bar to power term A. Sorry? Uh, CW, the map is CW to CZ, that the spectrum... Spectrum, spectrum, yeah. W goes to uh, Z uh, equal to W to power B. It's default cover. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so for any integer number, you get the standard one-dimensional module multiplied by, mm, generated by monomial, and they push forward by this covering map. And the theorem that you get Again, direct some decomposition. So it's analog of uh, the level to routine decomposition. The category of uh, holonomic models it directs some of all, all rational numbers of, and all categories are. Uh, Eventually, the same categories like coherent shifts with zero dimensional support on elliptic curve. Uh, what is the geometry of the set of irregular terms? Why rational numbers? Of the set. Uh, uh, Let's draw parallel with D models and difference models. Okay, difference model. Difference models. Uh, uh, 
I remind, remind you what was the geometric interpretation of this uh, uh, polynomials in D-model case. We consider the following guy. We consider uh, spectrum. So here's the algebra was something like this, yeah. And here you get algebra. Oh, C of Z, maybe just better. Z, and here we get C of Z, and this polynomials. Uh, we get Laurent polynomials, and here polynomials in differential. So here uh, we, mm, we do the following. We consider uh, a uh, we consider formal disk contains zero, and consider logarithmic cotangent bundle, and compactify fiberwise at infinity. And we get a certain Poisson manifold, which projects to puncture disk, on disk. And uh, uh, mm, my uh, Poisson form uh, uh, has zeros of order one along vertical devices and order two along uh, uh, horizontal devices. And now we start to make kind of various blow-ups. We can increase out of pole, and eventually we ha will have some new devices when the order of poles is one. Get new logarithmic divisors for, uh, to form, and all the set of all possible logarithmic divisors on universal blow-up, it's exactly kind of log divisors in the uni uh, universal it's called the risky space, uh, kind of blow up. Ah, and one-to-one -one correspondence to uh, blocks in, in the compositions. Yeah, so it was a geometry in the classical case. Here we do, uh, 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 instead of cotangent bundle, we get kind of C star bundle. We can see the CP1 multiplied by uh, uh, spectrum of C of Z. And here, it will be kind of a um, small piece of toric variety. It again projects to spec C of Z. And here, my uh, symplectic form has poles of order one at uh, one big divisor and two uh, uh, kind of formal germs of divisors. And now we can make blow-ups, but if you make blow-up, again, we get uh, logarithmic divisors. If you make blow-up, you get again here, again blow-up, again here. And uh, then uh, the set of all mm. kind of big divisors, except the small ones, the set of all kind of big log divisors, mm. It's not a formal, but actual CP1, because these devices are kind of very short pieces of curves. Uh, I in one to one correspond to the rational numbers T. Namely, if, if you introduce coordinates Z1 and Z2 here, you can see the curve Z2 equal to Z1 to power A over B. You get certain curve if A over B is zero, we get curve which intersect vertical fiber. Or if it's negative, you go up. If, if it's kind of Q negative, it's uh, T equal to zero, and get Q positive goes down. And, uh, and then uh, this device appears from kind of fairy decomposition of uh, fractions for rational numbers. Okay. Yeah, so it's so the fundamental result here it's theorem, it's analog of 
the linear Malgrange, Malgrange classification. It's a theorem by Saloy, uh, Ramis, and Jank about. Ah, you're right. Yes, Ramis. Yeah. It's maybe about f five, six years ago. It's pretty recent. Uh, a result, uh, which is a complete analogy of uh, uh, case of differential equations. You consider holonomic modules, Q difference modules. And now the fact that Q is less than 1, it bec became really essential. This here it could be just not root of 1 um, uh, in all this picture. Uh, but uh, Q difference modules over, now I take germs of meromorphic functions and again take polynomials in this Q difference operator. Uh, it will be vector uh, uh, the theorem is the following. It's the same as holomorphic vector bundle on elliptic curve bundle, maybe called uh, F, plus a filtration by rational numbers with finitely many step, filtration labeled by Q, by sub-bundles, Uh, such that associated graded this is, uh, kind of f lambda is semi stable with slope. I can mm, make mistake lambda or minus lambda. Uh, let's say lambda. And uh, what is the slope? What is semi stable? If you have a shift, uh, 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 have a vector bundle on the elliptic curve, um, suppose it's not zero, then it has, um, mm, uh, so its kind of slope will be uh, degree of the bundle divided by rank. It's a, some rational number. Mm. And uh, in definition, f it, it, it is um, slope of f. f is semi-stable with given slope. T if so this thing is equal to t. And for any sub bundle, which is strictly between f and f prime, this degree of f prime divided by rank of f prime is uh, as equal to t. Yeah. Mm. Then for every bundle, get canonical, it's called Hardener Siemens filtration, uh, 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 you get a sub bundle with. Uh, 
largest possible ratio and, uh, and iterate the procedure. So get kind of filtration. And, uh, and this degree over rank will decrease, strictly decrease. Uh, yeah, um, here I just want to uh, uh, say what is important here. You get a f uh, here also get a filtration, and associated degree it will be semi-stable, but degree or rank will increase, not decrease. Yeah, so it's. Uh, So here it will, what I get called something like anti harder normal Siemens filtration. So it's not unique object, it's uh, some additional, uh, non-trivial additional data. Mm. But then you should have a direct sum decomposition. Not direct sum. No, no, it's filtration by some numbers, but it's filtration by some different numbers. It's, it's filtration by certain collection of rational numbers. Uh, yeah, so this will be analog over the stocks data. If you take some associate grade, uh, yeah, just uh, one important uh, uh, fact, it's kind of theorem by idea. Uh, said the following. Uh, he, yes, he proved that uh, any vector bundles is actually direct sum of semi of semi stable bundles, and semi stable bundles with given uh, t are the same as coherent sh in this category are all equivalent to each other. Um, for example, if you consider the slope zero, it will, uh, you make Fourier Mukai transform, you get a shift with uh, zero dimensional support. And all categories are equivalent to coherent shifts with zero dimensional support on elliptic curve, which was exactly how all our blocks in, in, in this picture. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, uh, if you believe this is kind of black box, then the correspondence between formal and non-formal classification go to associated graded, and you get uh, um, this f formal classification. How this correspondence uh, uh, grows, uh, go goes? You consider your meromorphic bundle, consider point Consider point Z, then you get something like whatever QZ, then get Q square Z, Q cube Z. You get some kind of spiral. Uh, if you iterate uh, application, you get uh, maybe spiral which goes to zero. And mm, suppose you're interested in some solution maybe along the spiral. Uh, analytic solution along the spiral. Uh, now there are these basic models which I explained to you, just uh, this one generator that was upstairs. Uh, for this kind of basic uh, uh, Q difference equation, uh, if you want to write what is the solution, you get uh, uh, something like f of qz is equal to z to power ab, which is t, to power f of z. Then f of q square z will be qz to power t, f of z, f of qz, and so on. And then it, when you see that if you consider very far point of this fire, f of q to power n to power z, it will be z to power and t times q to power 
n times n minus 1 over 2 t f of z. So you see, it's, so you see that uh, uh, the norm of f q and z goes like this. It's q to power n square times t plus capital O of n. So it's it's analog of this exponential growth. So it's in power it goes like ex exponent of square of logarithm. Uh, and from this, I uh, think you you immediately see that uh, you can uh, also filter solutions by various slope. And what what it what it gives us. Mm. Ah. First of all, if you have this q-difference equation, you can forget about monomorphic structure zero, and because of its uh, equivalence under this q-difference operator, you get a holomorphic bundle on the elliptic curve. You identify fibers, it, uh, fibers of your bundle here, here, and here. They all identify, so you get holomorphic bundle on the elliptic curve. Then at each point of this elliptic curve, for each vector, you can see in which uh, terms of filtration it. Uh, uh, goes, uh, you just mm. uh, put, a, put a vector here and transfer it uh, in some meromorphic trivialization of bundle along the spiral and see how fast it grows. And this is, so it gives a filtration and the fact it's what they proved that it's uh, um, the three people that um, you get uh, uh, filtration by sub bundles and associated gradients are semi stable and it's one to one correspondence. And uh, finally, I can go to oh, oops, global case. Uh, now I have really this is my algebra of Q, which is. Q difference operators. Mm. Mm. The picture is the following. First, I'll draw uh, kind of uh, this picture with divisors. Now, consider C cross Z1 cross C cross Z2 and compactify by CP1, Z1 cross CP1, Z2. You can see the classical torus first with uh, symplectic form DZ1 of Z2. And here in this compactification, I get four divisors uh, when my two form has pole of order one. Yeah, uh, this kind of previous local picture was somewhere here, yeah, and is equal to zero. And now I, I can start to make blow ups at all four points, make kind of toric blow ups, and the set of all kind of limit of, set of, of all bars, the set of all uh, this log divisors, and have log pole, log pole divisor. It will be a two-fold copy of QP1. And we consider uh, double cover of RP1 and consider pullbacks of QP1. Uh, so what will happen? We get kind of like curves goes to this intersection, to this intersection, we get one bunch of rational numbers, another bunch of rational numbers, but also we can go here, we can go here. Uh, we get uh, two, uh, two copies of infinity. 
in this double cover. Mm. And what is this set? It's a set, it's the same set of kind of rational arrays in R2. Of primitive vectors in Z2. Mm. So this uh, the general claim is the following claim. Any holonomic AQ model produce a finite subset in, in, in either description in Z2 primitive. Uh, so it's just kind of find a collection of some uh, mm, uh, rays. Uh, uh, this will be analog of mm, mm, uh, uh, something like singular support for regular holonomic modules, uh, d modules in the usual situation, or this uh, more ir irregular uh, form of classification coming in irregular case. Uh, mm, And uh, the whole category will be described in the following way. Uh, uh, I claim that it's kind of little ad uh, then, uh, kind of uh, addition to this uh, really hard analytic result. Uh, that's category of holonomic modules. The modules is equivalent to the following thing. You consider coherent shift instead of vector bundle. Plus two anti hardener of single filtration on these coherent shifts. Uh, uh, coherent shifts are slightly more general than vector bundles. You consider, uh, in case of curves, you consider just torsion shifts plus vector bundle. And torsion shift, uh, one can say that it belongs to, uh, confused maybe to plus, uh, its slope is either plus or minus, uh, maybe plus infinity, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, so, so for, for, co for coherent shifts, how we do make hardware infiltration? Uh, uh, you get um, canonical torsion part, it will be canonical subobject here. Uh, so it means it's something like degree of Frank, I think it's plus infinity in these things. If you make quotient, you get, uh, it will be the same as, because the object is a direct sum of torsion plus vector bundle, you get this residual vector bundle. And then with this vector bundle, you do, you consider usual hardness infiltration. And here we do kind of, for coherent shifts, we do anti hardness infiltration. And um, that's kind of essential. For example, we can make equation something like f c of say z is equal to z minus one times say of z. That's a, a mm, typical equation which produce a, um, naturally some coherent shift of filtration with steps of which are coherent shift. In one, filtr one filtration will have coherent shifts. Uh, 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 torsion part in, in the filter, um, and the reason is that this, this equation, you get I, uh, I morphism for fiber from z to qz, but it's not isomorphism when z equal to one. When z goes to zero infinity, it's isomorphism, so you get this uh, vector bundle story, but you get a little co uh, correction and mm, one can figure out and uh, you get again some line bundle and one of filtration will be one step filtration, another filtration will be two step filtration with torsion part. Mm. Yeah, uh, these two filtrations uh, coming uh, from two limits. You can z goes to zero, z goes to infinity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, uh, yeah. At least kind of formally it looks. Now we have 
com complete analogy to, of this classification for differential equations. And uh, next time I'll explain how all the things naturally come from Foucault category considerations. Uh, maybe just one a little thing to add here. Uh, SL to Z uh, in si with semi-direct probability phi star square acts by uh, automorphisms of uh, this algebra Q. Uh, mm. And because this algebra in Q one can describe in kind of SL to Z covariant way. Uh, uh, So it acts essentially by monomial transformations. The question how it acts on this description. Yeah, so it's it's kind of baby, uh, it's a, a Q analog of Fourier transform, for example. Fourier transform acts on uh, D modules and and in principle, we know how to calculate uh, this, this Betty description, how to calculate for, uh, Betty description from Fourier transform. And uh, Uh, he, here it's, it, it's part of the following general statement. Suppose we have a C, a category with bridge and stability condition structure. Stability. It's triangulated category. Uh, so uh, stability structure means that to get a map from k zero group to R two, kind of oriented R two, and uh, you get some notion of semi-stable object for uh, in this category. So it's finding some axiomatics. Mm. Uh, what I claim is that this thing produces canonical abelian category. And mm, this abelian category uh, it's basically objects in the heart of T structure because when you get st stability structure, you get a heart of T structure, the heart of T structure plus two anti hardness infiltrations. Uh, mm, how to understand uh, these things? If you have an object, Usually, this structure called something like upper half plane or right half plane, and if, uh, if we have uh, the associated grid which are semi-stable objects, they have certain slopes which are uh, ordered in some uh, anti-clockwise order, and we get another iteration of the same object, uh, but you consider uh, part of this diagram below upper half plane. Uh, you maybe get something like n uh, mm, uh, rays. And the thing one can analyze is the same as the representation of quiver functor for quiver a n minus 1 to your category, uh, satisfying uh, that some the property that uh, some specific n object on in, the, uh, in this uh, representation of quiver goes to this semi stable object. For example, if you have picture like this, n equal 3, get 
give it a two and says we get three semi-stable objects in form exact triangle. Uh, and uh, and this notion it's, uh, from this notion it's pretty clear that the all invariant if you start to rotate your stability structure or deform by SL2R. And then the fact is this for elliptic curve. You get essentially unique up to universal cover FSL to R uh, stability structure. Mm, on on category of, of uh, on DB of coherent shifts. Mm, ah, yeah. So what is what's, what's important? You get this construction abelian category. And it's construction invariant under uh, action of universal cover of SL to R. This action, certain action of universal cover SL to R space space stability structures. So it's preserved here. Yeah. So it means that for elliptic curve we get some abelian category, which will be this, this guy. But now, uh, um, automorphism group of this category start to act. Fourier Mokaya transforms start to act on this thing. And this Fourier Mokaya transforms will produce a SL2Z action on uh, this description. Yeah, so it's... Um, um, pretty symmetric picture. I think I better stop now. <laughs>